Hello and welcome back. My name is Jo and I carve stamps. This is my very first carve along video. If you would like to join the carve along, there's a link down below in the description for where you can sign up. Anyone who's a member of the carve along will actually get one of these sheets every time they come out for each video that has the design for the episode. Today it's pineapple as a welcome, as well as, well as some tips and um, some links to where you can get some of the supplies. So um, if you'd like to join, please feel free to sign up and and if this is uh, some tough point in the future and you're thinking, oh, I want to get a copy of it, even if you sign up for this a couple years down the road, you'll be able to get a copy of this sheet. So for everyone, the purpose of the video is to actually get through actually carving a whole stamp so you can see the process from start to finish. So before we get started, uh, I just want to go through all the things that I have with me um, in case you're doing this while you're watching. Um, so obviously I have a copy of the design sheet and scissors so that I can cut it out. I have um, some regular speedball gouge tips um, in two different handles as well as a, a speedball, it's a calligraphy handle for my number one gouge tips. So I have a number one, I don't know if it's focusing there. I also have a two, and I have a four. The four is a little harder to find. Um, you will have to go into a, an art supply store to get that um, size. Um, you will want a box cutter, so a blade that's actually um, for carving the material. You will want a slab of material. Today I'm using um, this uh, generic Chinese type material that's yellow in the middle. I think it'll look great um, because these were also made with that same material, different colors. And you can see it's fun seeing the different color on the inside there. Um, so I'll put those there. Um, you'll want some ink. I'm going to use some memento dye ink um, to ink up my stamp when it's done. And I think that's it. So I like this generic material. Um, it's pretty easy to come by, but it doesn't have a manufacturer name associated with it. So it's hard to describe to people what it actually is. And um, hope if you have a feline friend, they're also helpful during this process. Um, the You may think that, oh, this uh, um, layer will be helpful to know where I've carved. It's actually not that helpful and I'll explain why later. So if you have your sheet, um, cut out the design you want. So what I've been, what I'm going to be doing is putting multiple sizes of the same design on the sheet so you can choose which one you want. So I put on this one, this beautiful, um, pineapple design that I put together. There's three different versions. So I've already carved the two smaller ones. Um, so you can see, I'm gonna do the largest one for the video so you can actually see more easily what I'm carving. Um, if you haven't carved anything before, you should know the smaller the details are, the harder it is. So if you want something that's a bit of a challenge, go for one of the teenier ones, or if you're just starting out, you might wanna try the bigger size. So. Um, in terms of transferring this onto the rubber today, what I'm actually going to do is a pencil transfer. Now, pencil transfers are not my favorite type of transfer. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, um, my preference is actually for uh, toner transfers. Uh, you use a, um, a toner printer and with either heat or chemical, you can actually get it to come off and right into your um, rubber. It's fantastic and it's very, very quick, but getting the right kind of printer can be tricky. Once you've got the right printer, it's amazing, um, but until you get that, uh, it's uh, obviously impossible. However, pencil was the very first type of transfer method I ever used. Um, basically, to do this pencil transfer, all you do is you take pencil and you literally draw over all of the design so that you can flip it over when you're done and rub it onto the, um, the rubber. The best part of pencil transfers is that you can literally do it anywhere. So if you're on vacation or if you find yourself out in the world and you're like, oh, that's a beautiful design, I wanna do it. As long as you can trace over it and you have a pencil with you, you can, you can do one of these types of transfers. Another thing I'm not a huge fan of with the pencil transfer is that it can get um, smudgy. 
so as you're getting sort of the lead on the design and then it's on your um, um, rubber and you're touching it it can sort of I don't know get mucky and icky Ew. so so I made this pineapple design for this very first um, carve along because I thought it's a very welcoming item you know I think there's a tradition of giving a uh, pineapple to your guests which I like I actually can't stand pineapple don't like it another part of pencil transfer I'm not a huge fan of is that it can take a little while So, um, one of the things, if you're following along and doing this as I'm doing it, I don't want to speed this up because I want to give people a chance to actually do exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it and sort of follow along just generally with the stamp carving process. Um, this first video, I decided to do a pencil transfer and a, a gouge carve because that's mostly where people start when they learn to carve stamps and often that's where they sort of stop they use pencil uh, transfers and they they don't really learn to uh, carve with a knife because partly in, in North America it seems to me like that's the de facto if you want to learn how to carve a stamp you do it with um, the gouge in other countries they do primarily the knife and so it's interesting to see that that difference um, it's kind of like a cultural difference but the crazy thing is is that stamp carving still is a very um, um, it's not a common hobby let's put it that way so if you don't want to um, use the pencil the way I am the alternative was to actually go over just go around the outside of the designs so you could have drawn around and put lines this way and so then you can just carve away the pencil lines rather than have the pencil lines show what needs to stay. That can be good if you're a visual um, uh, thinker and you're fine with watching the markings actually leave your stamp. Some folks get confused about what needs to stay and what needs to go if you've been doing a lot of stamp carving you might actually be uh, done your transfer already and then looking at this going, oh geez, you did it the long way. I'm doing it the long way for the purposes of the video so you can actually see what it is I'm doing. So I'm not almost done. So the next part of this is to actually rub the, the design onto the rubber. So let's see, it's kind of Kind of almost foiled if you look at it that's pretty okay oh the other important part coffee mm. so um getting it on the rubber there's one thing i want to show you about um the the carving blocks and this is not just a fault of this generic step this actually happens um, and it's even more noticeable with the speedball types this is not flat however it's manufactured it pinches in on the sides um, let me see if I can show you what I mean I am going to move the camera pardon me pardon me okay so if I go down here if I go like this can you see the light coming in the side there let me see right there see it kind of dips down now this slab isn't too bad um, apologize I'm making people sick um, so right there um, it pinches down at the sides and you want to be careful because um, if you put your design right to the edges your resulting design will um, how do I put it? It, it when you stamp with it the edges won't touch the paper so I always like to leave um, a little gap uh, usually about half a centimeter, I don't know what that is in inches, so that um, this this design isn't being put on the slab right close to the edge. I want to have it in a little bit. Now normally I would put it this way because I'd like to conserve my rubber as much as possible, but this one is just too tall and it will go in those danger zones at the side. So I am going to put it 
pull out the rubber this way and um, over to the side. So all you do, if you haven't done this before, super easy, put it down, hold it still. I'm gonna use the back of my eraser here and you just rub over where the design was. Now I'm going to do a sloppy job to show you what you can do if you miss some spots. So i do it real quick like that. See how when I pull it up, you can see? Um, and you can see I've missed some. So if you hold it still down with one or two fingers, you can pull it up and see where you've missed and then roll it back down and continue rubbing. So. You can do that as well with the toner transfers if you're really careful. Um, and I have a video on toner transfers if that's the way uh, anyone did this. Just because I'm doing this video with this one um, doesn't mean you have to. So there you go. I'm going to get rid of my scissors because I think we're done with them now. Um, and my box cutters are what we're going to need next. So I, I don't like to carve a stamp when it's still connected to the rest of it. I do like to cut it out, partly because if I carve this with the big slab, it's harder to hold, and I am a hand holder when it comes to um, my carving material. Also, and you can already see this is starting to happen, the um, pencil is starting to migrate onto the rest of the block, and I do like to keep it as clean as possible. So, I'm going to cut this out. Um, I use a box cutter for this and not my X-Acto knife because I like to keep my X-Acto knife super sharp for um, the actual cutting. Ta-da! So then I put that aside for another stamp, another day, and I have it ready to go. Do you like that? That's good. Alright. So, um, like I was saying with the, gar the gouge tips, the um, number one is really tiny. It's the, oh, make sure it's in the shot here. It's the tiniest of the tips, see that? Um, so that's the number one, if you've never used the gouge. Now if you buy the Speedball set, and there's a link on the sheet, um, and probably in the description below, um, you are looking at, um, a set that usually comes with the one, it comes with a two. So the two here, oh, sorry, let me just try to get this focused, um, is, um, is, is the same type of tip, but it's just taller. The, the gouge is, is uh, bigger, I guess. Now this tip, doesn't come with the set and it's harder to find. You've probably got to go into an art store that specializes in printmaking. It's the number four. You can see on the back it's the number four there. Um, and it, it has a bucket size. Usually the set comes with scooped rounded ones. I don't like those as much as this one and I'll show you why after but it's not too important for this this particular project. So in order to do this big enough so that you can see I'm actually going to carve with the one but if you want to get some nice details and you would want to do it or sorry I'm going to do it with the two you might want to do it with the one so now a lot of videos they would actually have you start by going around the outside of the entire drawing first I for this one I'm not going to do that because I there is a weird thing that happens rubber wants to move away from the gouge as, as nice as the material is um, it's always trying to get away so if you make a line around the outside like I just did there and then what you're gonna have to do is come through with these lines when you get to that spot where it crosses the rubber is going to um, squeeze in um, and it's really hard to see here, but I will stamp that after so you can see the difference. So what I like to do instead is carve those lines out first so that it goes straight through the rubber on outside of the pineapple and you won't notice that it's changed anywhere, but then um, go around after and then you get a smooth edge. Hope that makes sense. So that's how I'm gonna do mine and that's what I'll start with because probably these, the lines here are the trickiest part. So if you haven't used a gouge before, um, the key is, and notwithstanding the fact that it comes in you know, a number of different sizes, is that you can really make any type of cut you want with any size, it just matters how much pressure you're pushing 
um, into the material um, because this the V will will sort of dive like a dolphin as far as you want now of course you don't want it to go far enough that the the two tips go under because then it's just gonna get snagged in the rubber and that's not what anyone wants you kind of want to have it be just enough so that you're getting an equal width on both sides that sort of matches up with the design um, one of the sort of next skills when you're doing stamp carving is how you sort of exit the rubber because and that's part of the reason we did this design is that these upward um, lines in the I don't know are these pebbles or not pebbles on on the sex segments of this pineapple um, you're there's two ways of doing that and I'll, I'll show you I prefer the one now you'll see and you might see other printmakers going oh my god her fingers her fingers this carving material is meant for stamp carving and it's super soft. So I don't, I'm not using a ton of pressure. When you hear about printmakers saying, oh, you have to put it on the table and you have to carve away from yourself, it's because they're using carving material that is so hard that they're using these tools, uh, I'll say properly, um, the back goes in your palm and you push it because you're, you're trying to get as much arm strength to push it through lino which is very hard that's not what we have here this is so delicate that you can just carve it with your fingertips and um, so you're not using a ton of pressure and even if my um, tool should skip out of the the rubber which is what you're you know those people are afraid of when they're carving um, there's no force it's not going to go anywhere it'll come out and just kind of I don't know like eh, on my finger so um, you know safety first I don't recommend the harder type carving materials um, so what are those well those are there's thinner ones that are typically they're sold in the printmaking sections of places. You want ones that are super soft, that carve like butter that's been in the fridge for too long. That's basically the consistency you want, okay? I want you to be safe. Ta-da! So there, we've done the grid. Now, as I've been doing that, this is my older handle, um, and it actually <laughs> has loosened the chuck. I, I pressed so hard on it. Um, so this grate here, in case you're ever in the same position as me, I was carving so many stamps that grate, and because I'm holding it like this on the grate, it just, I, I still have a callus on my thumb that, you know, um, not a huge fan of. It just so happens that the tips for these by Speedball match the same type of, of um, insertion point as for their calligraphy pens. So this is one of Speedball's cheapy calligraphy pen holders. Um, I have actually co-opted it to use it to carve um, with my number one, which is the, the tip that I use most frequently. And it's smooth and it's got a bit of a, a point on it there. So um, you might want to try getting one of those. If you are doing a lot of carving, you're finding that one is kind of painful. So there. As my helpful tip for you. So the next helpful tip is that um, those upward pieces. So if you look in the design, um, you've got these like ticks going up. So if you've not um, done um, um, a lot of carving, actually, I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of something, something. We're gonna, grab, we're gonna grab blue. Okay, so this is the exact same carving material, except it's blue in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a quick technique thing here. Like I said, the lines that this makes are are in keeping with how much pressure you're putting down. So this is the same tip, but I've made two very different lines there, and you can see one of them's actually gone right down to the color in the middle, and that's um, just really shallow and in the white. Um, so keep in mind that you can practice how much pressure you're using to see what kind of detail you can get with your gouge tip. The other is how you end it. So I started and ended those the same way where it's you know a gradual and then you press down and then you gradually out so you can even make that more noticeable you can see it there but the other type you is by pressing it in and then jerking it straight up so that you actually get a very um, uh, can you even see that there um, so you get a very um, 
noticeable uh, tick there so it's it's sort of straight across so to do that you basically press down and then you come straight up press down and in and then straight up and obviously the, the wider the tick is and the straighter up um, the more noticeable it is now it's not perfect because what you're doing is you're making the rubber break um, at that point so you can see this one's straight this one actually broke on a jag but it gives you a different impression about how to um, get that kind of um, you can get a straight line there um, the other part is and I'll show you this our design doesn't have any right angles if you want with the gouge to get a right angle I actually like going into the corner so I would go and cut in like that and then back out so you're just leaving that still connected and then go in on the right angle into that same corner that will actually cut it and you'll get a perfect right angle in there um, so I don't like to cut out of corners I like to cut into corners so if that is confusing let me know in the comments and um, I'll try to get another um, a video with right angles and a gouge at some other time so that's how that works now I just want to show you so we're absolutely uh, clear I'm gonna do a quick test print of this little scrap so you can see what I mean You can see very, very clearly the um, there's the thin line here, the thick one. That's the same gouge, just with pressure. You can see the ticks at the top and the right angle there. So that's how that works. Um, so I want with this to actually have my oops, wrong gouge. Um, my those upticks in the design to actually have a bit of a point on them. So I'm going to do that technique and I'm actually gonna take it from the bottom of each of these sort of squares. I'm gonna put it in and then pop it up. Let's stick it in, pop it up. Sounds kinda of dirty. All right, I've got a dirty mind. You're watching a stamp carver with a dirty mind. I apologize. Now, as I said, mentioned earlier, but I didn't go into any detail yet about the, the carving rubber being yellow on the inside and white on the outside. Your, even with this number one or two uh, gouge tip, you can see that it's, it's rare I'm getting deep enough that it will actually make that yellow show. Um, if you're trying to carve this, making that yellow show, you're going to be carving probably way too deep um, at least for the initial design part of this and um, you may be getting yourself into um, a bit of trouble with your gouge tip being um, diving too far into the rubber and then you can rip the rubber and that kind of thing so just be aware that the, the yellow in the middle is best to be shown sort of around the outside of the design so you can sort of see it here where the light purple is sort of visible here but then you can see the dark purple um, around the outside so like I said I'm gonna go around the outside now that we're done the interior part of that and I'm pressing pretty hard because we're just clearing material at this point but I'm raising it and using less pressure because the line is thinner for where this pineapple top is connected so I'm just gonna go through that more gently and then when we come out I can go deep again so the key to gouge carving really is knowing the pressure that you need to use to get the width of line that you need in any given spot on a design, okay? It's also knowing when your gouge is dull enough to replace it because you're gonna hurt yourself. You always want sharp tools. Okay, so that's done. Now the easy part, the top, so we'll do the inside first. I always like to do the hard parts first. Um, in the interior lines, um, you actually have to be aware of both rails of the gouge because um, you need to get it to line up properly. Um, and if you don't, you might cut out something that's not supposed to. This, one's, this design's pretty easy on purpose so that it'd be harder to do that, but there we go. There's the inside and now I'm going to carve around the out. So if you're still following me here, um, this carve along has been something that's been sort of 
sitting around in my brain for a while because I get a lot of people, particularly on Instagram, messaging me and saying, well, how did you do this? And how did you do that? And I'm just learning. And where did you get this? And why are you doing it like that? And um, I love sharing this hobby because it's a kind of weird hobby. There's no, for instance, you know, there's no section in Michael's. That's the stamp curving section. And what that means is that anyone who's learned about this has found it because I don't know, how did you learn about stamp curving, um, folks in the comments? Um, the reality is that um, there is not a single place in the store where you can go to buy your curving supplies and um, it's hard to find information and troubleshooting and there's not a lot of people who are doing it so it's hard to ask other people. and. So this was my way beyond just a regular video of trying to get some information out there. So if you ever have questions, feel free to ask me. Now, more pressing is what's, what do you want for the next video? So I'm thinking for the next video, it'll be a, um, a knife carving, but uh, you know, I need a design for it. Canada Day is coming up. Canada is gonna be 150 next month. Should I do a maple leaf? Does that sound like a good plan? Okay, so there, I've outlined it. Now, I can tell by the pressure that I had to use that this um, number uh, two gouge tip is actually getting dull and I might even retire it after this video. Once you get carving a bit, you'll start to notice what pressure your gouges need to use. Like this one already, I'm finding it so much easier. So to clear away the excess material and start revealing this beautiful yellow in the middle, uh, I'm using my number four gouge. Um, if you have a number, oh I think the rounded ones are the number threes, you can maybe use those. You can use the number two as well. I also just like to cut out um, um, the excess around the outside rather than clear them. So what do I mean by that? I mean that instead of trying to carve that or clear that, I'm actually just going to cut away the excess like that. Um, because uh, there's two different ways oops, of carving material that you'll see. There's some people who like the stray marks because I guess it shows that it was hand cut. I actually like my my stamps to look as clean as possible, so I don't want stray marks. So um, I'm always this process of clearing out is tedious, but it's also kind of dangerous because at this point you're like oh, I'm done the design, and you go in with the with a gouge to clear things, and then you cut off important parts. Not that I've ever done that repeatedly. So. So definitely, like I said earlier, let me know in the comments um, if you enjoyed the video and um, if you'd like, if you're already part of the carve along, you're getting emails from me. I actually, you know, that's not like some, those emails aren't from some stranger, they're from me. So you can actually reply directly and they come to, you know, my inbox, I'm, I'm reading them and it's not like uh, there's tons of people there. If you have questions or if you have ideas or if you have a design you'd like to see, send me an email. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So you can see even with this one, I actually prefer to carve into the corners rather than out of them because I can see where the front of the cutting surface is going. So you don't inadvertently carve away something that needs to stay. So. There we go. Now I already see there's a spot right here that that couldn't catch. Same here. Ta -da. There we go. Now, um, here's an extra tip. If you want to get rid of the pencil, you can actually use um, rubbing alcohol or acetone to get rid of it just on a cotton pad like that. Woo, you can clean it up. It looks so pretty. Um, I do that if it's going to be sort of a gift or if I'm not using an ink that sort of stains. Um, but I like to see it like that. There we go. Um, keep in mind that if you do that, you will lose 
your your um, pattern on top of it. So if you didn't uh, carve everything away, now you don't really have the um, um, the, the transferred design on it. So I'm going to use the back of the carve along sheet to test my new um, stamp. I'm using uh, these Memento inks by Sukuneko. They're the Dew Drop Dewdrop style um, that I like so much. So um, let's see. It's going to shake the camera. I'm sorry. So that color was Cantaloupe, and this one's Tangelo. I like to mix my colors a bit. That horrifies people, but there you go. And obviously, the top, I want it to be green. Green, 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 green. Oh, went over it a bit. So there we go. Oh, it looks so pretty inked up. Oh, I'm a sucker. All right, press it down. Oh, I love it. Okay, well, that's it. That's the last um, bit of this video. If you enjoyed it, please click subscribe if you're not already. If you want to sign up, there's a link down below in the description. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, you can find me on Etsy. My shop is Cuts and Scrapes. I'm also on Instagram at Cuts and Scrapes Etsy shop. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.